Chintz, exuberant and exotic, these brightly coloured printed calicos of southern India enjoyed great vogue in fashion and furnishing. You cannot imagine what a great number of the chintz we sell here, wrote the London office of the East India Company to its agent. Two hundred thousand of all sorts in a year will not be too much for this market. In the year 1724, a manufactory for printing calico was established upon the site of Merton Abbey, being at present in the occupancy of Messrs Hodgson, Newton and Leach, who carry on a very extensive trade and have brought the art to a great degree of perfection. The, the traditional method of printing the Indian cloths was with wooden blocks, the details being touched in by hand. The Merton Abbey printers perfected the art of printing using engraved copper plates. This enabled much larger surface areas to be printed at a time, and led to the development of a European style of chintz, of which some of the finest examples were printed by Francis Nixon of Merton Abbey. These showed pastoral scenes, birds and flowers, printed in monochrome, either blue or red. Part of the technical achievement lay in mastering the use of natural dye stuffs, madder and indigo, as well as the mordants used to reduce and fix them on the cloth. This was the same problem to be addressed by William Morris a hundred years later when he sought to revive the purity of colour and integrity of line to the traditional chintz. William Morris, artist, craftsman, poet, thinker. As the figurehead of a group of craftsmen in the decorative arts, he made a major contribution to the development of a new aesthetic, the English arts and crafts movement. Morris and Co. was formed in 1875, and the need for adequate workshop space led Morris to premises next to the Wandle at Merton Abbey. These buildings were traditionally associated with the Huguenots, Protestant refugees fleeing religious persecution in Europe. They settled in the Wandle Valley and introduced the industry of calico bleaching. The characteristic parallel trenches of the bleaching fields, with cloth laid out in the open air, was a familiar sight by the banks of the Wandle. In 1881, Morris acquired the seven acres of lush meadows bounded and intersected by the Wandle's windings, with their rambling quaint buildings of tarred weatherboard and red tile scattered promiscuously among the willows. Not only did these appeal to his romantic nature, but also offered space enough to accommodate the entire output of the firm, stained glass, carpets, tapestry, as well as the woven and printed fabrics. Morris believed that good design stemmed from a thorough knowledge of materials and technique. From 1876 he had been experimenting with natural dyes for the special quality of colour he required for his designs such as Wandle, named after that helpful stream. The cloth is first dyed a uniform blue. The pattern was then bleached away, leaving white or pale blue. Mordants, the chemicals which enable the dye to fix on the cloth, were printed on next. Reds and oranges were added by immersion in madder, and yellows and greens from dipping in weld, with the cloth being rinsed in the river wandle after each stage. In 
In the mid-19th century, Britain reached a peak of prosperity, influence and empire. From her distant colonies came new luxuries, the splendid shawls from the foothills of the Himalayas, with their central flame motif symbolising life. Yet known in England as Paisley, after the town in Scotland where the pattern was reproduced. Amongst those impressed by these was a young shop assistant who worked at Farmers and Rogers Shawl Emporium. In 1875, he opened his own store in Regent Street and he himself and his shop became a byword for quality and style. However, detecting a drop in the quality of imported goods, he turned to English dyes and printers to maintain his supply. In 1878, he contracted a Merton Abbey firm to print exclusively for him. Littler & Co operated from a former calico printing works upstream from the Morris works. At the turn of the century, Liberty took over the family business and management of the site. The old tumble-down print shops were replaced by new and more substantial buildings. It was here that the patterns were printed that established Liberty at the forefront of fashion during the Belle Epoque. Although new methods of printing were being devised, silk, the queen of fibres, still required the special skill and precision of hand block printing. Each colour is carried on the raised surface of a wooden block. The block is placed on the cloth and given a smart tap with the handle of the block printer's maul. Projecting pins from each corner leave a grid of tiny pinpoints to guide the printer in registering the design at each passage. As the 20th century advanced, new techniques and technologies, changing styles and fashions, provided challenges to which liberties were able to respond. Textile printing at Merton Abbey, however, ceased in 1982. The world had progressed away from its quaint charm, hand skills and craftsmanship, which was the heritage of generations of Merton Abbey printers.